The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. That's Every us. single week, Lady Ada looks into finding the things that you're trying to find. Lady Ada, what's a great search this week? Okay, so um, this great, this week's great search is actually a topical one because actually, you know, it's it's not the chip shortage, but chips still go out of um, stock and they go out of end of life, and you know, we eventually have to find an alternative. Um, so for the voice bonnet and the Braincraft hat, we've been using the Wolfson Cirrus WM8960. Um, which has, you know, very good Raspberry Pi support, um, fairly easy to use. And what I like about this chip is it's an I2S codec, so it does audio in and out. And it has a couple niceties. You can have two microphones. So you see there's like this mic here, mic there, left and right mic. There's um, two speaker outputs that can do eight ohms. So you can do stereo speaker output, which again, is quite nice. And it can do headphone slash line out, and it's true headphones. So like it, it does, you know, amplification for the headphones, not line out where it won't be able to drive uh, a 32 ohm or 16 ohm load. So, you know, this is eight ohm load, 16, 32 ohm load. Again, it has Raspberry Pi support. It does need an M clock pin, but you can set up an oscillator and then you just tell the driver, look, I have a fixed, I think 24 megahertz oscillator. This chip was expensive. It's like it's like seven dollars, which is why you know the, the cost of the the whole thing is twenty five, and I, I'm still able to get some, but the prices are going up and up and up because it's very discontinued. It's completely obsolete, and so I want to find an alternative. And my requirements are: um, I want something as Linux kernel drivers because I do not want to write a kernel driver to get it into mainline. Ideally, somebody's even gotten it to work with the Raspberry Pi, especially with the M clock thing, because again, it, the Raspberry Pi doesn't have M clock generation, so I need to give it an oscillator. And then um, tell it how to do the division for each, you know, 44 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz, 22, whatever it is it's playing. Headphone output, microphone input, and like the microphone sounds good, so you can do voice projects. Because what was really nice is that with this, you plugged in with the Raspberry Pi, now you have mic and speaker output, and you could do projects um, that you could talk to and would talk back, um, you know, or, or like to record audio. Um, good. You know, it would be nice maybe if you could also do line in from the, maybe another headphone jack, but look, you know, I'm whatever, whatever I can get. So the first thing I did, um, was this the chip? No. So this is Cirrus. This is the company that makes it. So first if I just, you know, the first thing you do is just like type in, oh, sorry, W M the chip and they're like, yes, it's obsolete. And they're like, well, we have the 62 version. So here's the problem with the 62 version, because it's like, why don't you just go with it? First off, it's still kind of pricey. You know, it's like five, six bucks. Um, second, it's like a, a fine pitched WL CSP. So, and it's like only four millimeters by four millimeters. That means it's gonna be like 0.4 millimeter pitch, which means I have to go to like plugged VS4, six layer boards. I don't want to do that because not only is a chip expensive, but now like my process is expensive and my yield's going to go down. Um, you know, the picking places that we have in-house don't really do, I mean, they could do BGA, but like it's, you yeah, don't have an extra machine and I don't, I, I can't even imagine how much an extra machine would cost now, especially with um, tariff uh, additions. So um, let's find other codecs. So let's look in the, Codec. So one thing to look at here, you can data interface, I squared CSPI, not to worry about it. Active. Why don't I, oh yeah, this is the version that's active. Two ADCs, two DACs, resolution, you know, whatever, sigma delta, I don't care. And the voltage also, I don't care. As long as everything's going to be let me do 3.3 volt logic in. I don't need care if I need a separate 1.8 volt supply. I'm going to be used to it. So let's look at codecs. So first off, let's look at only active codecs. And I'm going to ignore marketplace. I'm going to say normally stocking only. So that gets me from 1500 down to like 240, which is good. Next, I'm going to look at those number of ADCs and DACs. And remember, it's like I need stereo line in, microphone in, and stereo output. And you might be wondering, well, wait a minute, the WM8960 had two, two, but you had both headphone out and speaker out, yeah, because it switches. You could you switch between the two, right? So I just want to make sure I have at least two in, two out. Now you can have up to like six, eight, you know, you have like multiple line ins and multiple line out, but I need at least two, two. 
to apply, see what comes up. So <clears throat> a couple things came up. So let me just sort by price because, you know, why not? Um, so there's the NAU 88 series. And I'll be honest, actually, this doesn't look too bad. It's, they have a lot of them in stock. However, and this is, this is, it's called the C, but I think that just means it's some subtype. It has speaker out, stereo, headphone out, stereo, microphone in, and line in. So it's actually quite good. But when I looked around, there was a driver, but I couldn't see anyone who got it working on the Raspberry Pi. So this is like on my list. It's very inexpensive. You know, it's only $1.22. So it might be worth the extra effort. But the fact that I couldn't find immediately someone who got it working with a Raspberry Pi was a little bit like, uh-oh, like, again, I don't, I really don't want to ride a driver. Although, it's on my list. Then I looked at the 9866. This one, you know, look, I love Maxim. The problem is they only have headphones. There's no speaker. Although, I do like that they have the two mics in. Bummer. So I'm going to skip that one. This is another one in the NAU series. It's very similar. This one is WLP. It's a couple, a couple CSPs came in here. I was like, man, I really don't want to deal with this. So let's Let's filter out all of the BGA and CSP chips. I'm only going to do QFN, QFP, and also QFN. VSOP is fine. Uh, QFP, QFN. <clears throat> but no, uh, I don't know if I'd go up to like a 64, but whatever, I'll just, uh, I'll pretend. And then leave off all the chip scale, all the BGA. Okay, now I have 121 chips. Okay. Then there was the TLV320 series, which we know and love. And this one is actually somewhat promising too. Um, this particular one, the 3104, <coughs> I think it actually doesn't have speaker output, it has line output. But when I went to TI, I found that the 3101, which is here, it's a little bit more expensive, but still not too bad, it's like $2. This one was very promising because it had full, uh, I thought I had speaker out, let me check. Same as, yeah, so the, <coughs> let me show you the speaker. Yeah, so stereo eight ohm, only half watt, but that's okay. But it does have speaker and it has headphone drivers. Um, so this one is also um, a good option. Let me sort by uh, quantity, see if I can find the chip. Um, I looked at some of these. A lot of these only had headphone. They didn't have speaker. Um, this one I think we looked at right and it had headphone only. I looked at a bunch of these. Another one that came up that I actually kind of liked the look of, and I did see some people got it working with a Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to look at the TLV because I, you know, the TLV is a chip I already kind of have a footprint for, and I have a, a working knowledge of it. And what I like is I have an Arduino driver for that series, and so if I test it, I can test it on Arduino, and it's like I can send it I2S audio, and I can, you know, without having to. Um, use a Raspberry Pi to test it, which is always harder. This one has speaker, amplifier, it has headphone, it has line out, which I like, has mic in. And I'll be honest, I actually kind of like this as a recent chip from 2024. Um, I like the Max 98 series. I've had really good luck with it. They're, they're like kind of easy to use. You do need M clock as usual, but Um, yeah, there's a lot of like switchable pins and stuff for different, you know, ports. Usually you can have like more than one I2S port. There's the mic bias. There's I2C for configuration, multiple microphone inputs, multiple line inputs, and then multiple, um, there's headphone and speaker output. Class D speakers. And like I said, I, I, I do like the speakers. Let's see if they can... Then a limiter. Let's see if I can find the wattage. 
speak about the files of Hades. Here. Um, it's annoying. They don't say how many watts it can handle. Oh, I have to do the ohm symbol. Hold on. Ohm. Yeah. Okay. Ah, here you go. Sorry, it's here. Um, so it can handle four ohm, three three watts, or or two watts per channel eight ohm. So it's actually like a really good speaker driver too. So I actually kind of like the look of this one. I mean, I'll look at the TLV. I'll I'll also maybe check out the NAU because it's so cheap. But I actually, you know, like I got a good feeling about this one. The the max. 98089. So this one's cool. It's a little, it's a little pricey still, four dollars, but I think it might be worth it. I like all the extras that it comes with. So this is my pick for the great search. So I'll probably start working on a breakout for this in the next week or two. It's a great search. Can't get that Wilson chip anymore. Good work. Wilson! Where in the world is